We are interested in how bacteria cause disease, and in particular, how they use virulence factors, bacterial proteins, to interact with our host cells, our host proteins, to modulate the biology of the host cell to cause disease. So the project that uh, Drag and I were working on is with the pathogen Helicobacter pylori. This is a stomach pathogen that's been with human beings uh, for as long as we've been human beings, essentially. And um, it is the only bacterium that can survive in the human gut and colonize it. I uh, was diagnosed with H. pylori infection and pot potential gastritis, so I went through the whole process of getting rid of it and suffering <laughs> through uh, all this. So uh, it was kind of natural choice to try to work on something that you actually had. It's a medical concern. It has been linked very strongly to cancer. And in fact, there's one particular protein of Helicobacter that is very tightly correlated with uh, causing ulcers uh, and having ties to uh, gastric carcinoma. And this is the CAG-A protein. CAG -A, um, like I said, epidemiologically, it's been tied to ulceration and cancer. At the cellular level, it does all kinds of things. It deregulates the structure of cells, they change their shape, it changes uh, the communication of proteins in the cell, so uh, modulates the uh, communications and pathways in the cell. It even destabilizes the interactions between cells and, and tissue layers in the stomach so that they become less tight. And um, some people believe that this is uh, a way in which the bacterium can then access layers that it normally wouldn't be able to by fitting through some of these breaks and the junctions between these cells. So the protein that we have studied that interacts with CAG -A is a kinase called Mark II that is involved in some of these cell-cell uh, interactions and maintaining uh, what are called you know tight junctions, essentially uh, tight interactions that form tissue layers. The question we set out to find in this study was at the molecular level, at the atomic level, how does CAG A shut down this protein kinase? All right, so it inhibits its activity, kills it, makes it dead. How does it do that? X-ray crystallography is one of the few methods that you can actually see where every single atom in these molecular machines are located and how they do what they do. It gives you a blueprint for uh, the chemistry, uh, for the what at the molecular level is happening. Sort of like opening up a car engine as opposed to studying it from half a block away and trying to understand how it works. So the reason we wear these glasses is they allow us, just like in a movie theater when you see Harry Potter, to see the chemical model in three dimensions. So it's very complicated. There's you know, literally thousands of atoms that come out at you and go back. So uh, it's very nice to be able to get a three-dimensional feel uh, to the molecules we're building and interpreting. The interaction and the complex between CAG -A and Mark II was very stable and we were able to work with it. and. Uh, to get the structure. What was especially amazing for me in this whole project is that you have a keg a, which is a huge protein. So we worked with the part of it, which is one tenth of it, that was bound to Mark II. And then once we got the structure, we saw even one tenth of that part bound to Mark II. And amazingly enough, it gave us the answer and gave us the mechanism how keg a inhibits Mark II. And that was very, very exciting for me. Uh, we found that there's a short region in CAG A, just a 14 amino acid peptide that binds right in the active side of the enzyme, so the place where all the chemistry happens. And it does so in a fascinating way. Uh, it binds mimicking, so essentially pretending to be uh, the normal types of what are called substrates, the things that normally bind there from our cells. The kinase is totally fooled. It, it goes into this active conformation, getting ready to, to try to phosphorylate it and do its thing, but there's nothing to phosphorylate. The chemical group that's normally there, a serine, is not there in CAG-A, so it's just locked in this uh, trapped, dead state. It's uh, a case where evolution has created a bacterial protein that pretends to be one of ours, looks like one of ours, but then does something bad to one of our proteins, shuts it down. I think what we've been able to do is show that this protein can be um, dealt with in sort of this modular fashion and it'll probably open this up to, uh, I hope, to an increased rate of, of discovery because it's, there, there's a lot that needs to be understood about CAG-A.